This is the third week of our series, United We Stand, and unity is incredibly powerful. It can make an incredible impact. Um, 2,000 years ago, the world was changed because a diverse group of people came together, rich and poor, Gentile and Jew, um, different political views. They came together united by following the person of Jesus Christ. And as Acts 17 said, they turned the world upside down. And we see the power of unity when it comes to sports teams and why they succeed. We see it in nature and how God has taught animals even just to work together naturally, like geese flying in V formation. And it's important for us to look at unity, to, unity during this time because it is a time of great political division and cultural division and just a lot of division going on. It's important for us to look at unity because we can't unite physically in some of the same ways we were able to do so before. So it's imp we're taking this series to be reminded of what unites us. And ultimately, of course, what unites us is that we, we serve the Lord God, that we are following Jesus Christ, that we have a common and united mission. It's what we talked about last time, about being disciples of Jesus Christ and making disciples. And now we're, today we're going to look at how we have a common vision. And to help us do that, we're going to look at a passage from Ezekiel 37. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. And Ezekiel literally has a vision. And here's what he writes. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me round, round among them. And behold, there were very many upon the valley. And behold, they were very dry. So in this vision, God leads this prophet, the prophet Ezekiel, out into a valley of dry, dead bones. And that's all that Ezekiel can see. He looks to the north, and there's dry, dead bones. He looks to the, the west, and there's dry, dead bones. And to the east, and to the south, in all directions, all around him is just dry, dead bones. And so God asks Ezekiel a question. Son of man, can these bones live? God asks Ezekiel, can these dry, dead bones come back to life? And see, these, these dry, dead bones are, are, are a symbol of the dry, dead faith of the people of Israel. They had stopped believing. And so God asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I think Ezekiel gives a great response. He says, oh, Lord God, you know, right? There's somebody smarter than you, wiser than you. You let them talk more than you talk, right? You let them answer those tough questions. And here's Ezekiel with God. And he says, God, look, you're God, I'm not. You tell me, can these dry, dead bones come back to life? And God said to him, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So these people of Israel who have dry, dead faith, and God says to Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to these bones. What does that mean? I want you to speak God's word. That's what it means. Speak God's word to these dry, dead bones. And so, Ezekiel continues. He says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a rattling. And bones came together, bone to bone. So Ezekiel, he does what God commands. He starts speaking God's word to these bones. And there's a noise. And then there's a rattling. And then the bones, they start coming together bone to bone. Ezekiel continues. And as I looked, there were sinews on them. And flesh had come upon them. But there was no spirit in them. So Ezekiel sees some progress. Right? The bones start coming back together. The, the sinews connecting the bones, that happens. But... There's no spirit in them. And that often happens with a vision. Things can start to come together, 
but there's really not quite momentum to it yet, right? It takes, it's, it's there, but it's not quite there yet. You know what I'm talking about? And so Ezekiel sees that things are in order. There's progress, there's, but it's not there yet. So God speaks to him. Then he said to me, prophesy to the Spirit, Son of Man. Prophesy, Son of Man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O Spirit, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. See, until God's Spirit enters into these dry, dead bones, they're not really alive. And so Ezekiel prophesies to them. So I prophesied as I was commanded me, and the Spirit came into them, and they lived. And they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly vast army. An exceedingly vast army. And isn't what Ezekiel talks about, the situation we find ourselves in, that we can look out at the church and see it's full of dry, dead bones, that there are so many people who maybe believe in God and believe in Jesus, but their faith is dry. It's dead. It's dead. It's, it's not doing anything. And so as our vision of a church is to wake people up, bring them back to life in their faith, to become an exceedingly vast army that is building God's kingdom, that's bringing God's love into this world, that's bringing people into a fully devoted, uh, bringing people into a relationship with Jesus Christ, becoming fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ so they bring God's love into this world. That's what we're doing as a church. That's our vision. And we see progress in our own vision. There's so many of you that, that get involved in ministry and missions and are, are part of that vast army. Part of our, mission, our vision as a church is to impact other parishes, to change and transform other parishes so they can build up their own vast armies. And then we're all working together to build God's kingdom. So what can you do with this message? Well, I want, I want to encourage you to do two things, one personally and one corporately. And number one, the personally, is that we need to keep feeding on God's Word. That without God's Word and without the Holy Spirit, who, who is the author of Scripture, without feasting ourselves and quenching our thirst and filling ourselves up with the God's Word, we, we get dry. Right? One of my favorite worship songs from way back, it's kind of a classic worship song, says this about, your spirit is water to my soul. We need the water of Scripture on our dry, dead souls. And so personally, just every day, are you listening to God's Word? Are you reading God's Word? Are you filling yourself up with God's Word to keep you from becoming dry and dead in your faith? Second, you know, our, our vision is for people to become part of a vast army and to use their lives to, to bring God's love into the world and to be about uh, serving God and His purposes. But that always begins with an invitation. And the, uh, in the season we are in, there's an incredible opportunity to make invitations. And so in the last message, small group message, talked about watch parties, so maybe think about doing that. Another way you can begin making invitations to people to come into a relationship with Christ and His church is through our website, you know, using your social media. So if you go to our website, churchnativity.com slash invite, there are things, there are, are, are ways we're trying to make it easier for you to promote connecting to Christ and His church through social media. So think about those opportunities to invite people into a relationship with Christ and His church, either through watch parties or just using your social media. Because while people get changed and transformed and they get fired up and they, they come back to life, it all begins with your simple invitation. Let me pray for us. Father, I just love, love this scripture. Thank you for this vision you gave to Ezekiel. God, we pray that you would use our church. You would use us personally to help people who are dry and dead in their faith come back to life and come back into a relationship with you. God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. And use your Holy Spirit that we might bring other people back into a relationship with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.